We explained the PKPD of vancomycin and determined the vancomycin loading dose. We also recommended IDSA guideline concordant empiric vancomycin maintenance dose and frequency. We also determined empiric vancomycin dose and frequency based on population pharmacokinetics. Now the next learning objective is given a patient with an MRSA infection, select an individualized vancomycin dose and frequency based on serum vancomycin level. Most hospitals in the US get a single vancomycin level, typically a trough level. So first, let's examine how to ad adjust the dose based on a single vancomycin level. Anytime you have a level back and you're about to assess the dose, first and foremost, you need to reassess the patient's renal function to make sure the renal function is stable. Because depending on what's going to happen with the renal function, that could affect how you're going to adjust the dose and frequency. Then you need to assess the level. So when you order a trough, you shouldn't always assume that it's actually a trough. So when you order a trough, it's just a matter of when the nurse actually draws the level. So when the level comes back, even though it's labeled as a trough, you should assess the time that it was drawn to make sure that it was actually a true trough. Once you establish that the level was actually a trough, then you can actually use uh, a simple proportion to, to estimate how to adjust the dose. And this equation of proportions only works with total daily dose. For example, if somebody was receiving one gram Q8, then the total daily dose would be three grams. So you would put 3000 milligram here, and then you would put here the, the actual level that came back as a trough. Assuming that the measure trough was not at goal, because it was if it was at goal, then you shouldn't change the dose. But if it was not at the target, trough then you need to adjust the dose so then here you will put the goal trough and then solve for x and x would give you the total daily dose you can use this equation with either subtherapeutic levels or with supra therapeutic levels so if it's a subtherapeutic level uh, ideally you're going to increase the daily dose if it's supra therapeutic you're going to decrease it and then whatever uh, daily uh, total daily dose that you get then you will have to convert it to the same frequency so for example, if somebody was receiving one gram Q8 and you converted uh, that to 3,000 3, milligram, um, whatever here you get, you need to convert it to Q8. Um, and that's how this uh, proportion equation will work. You have to maintain the same frequency. Otherwise, if you try a different frequency, it's not going to be as accurate. So that was the fast way of doing it based on a single level. Another way to do it is to actually use uh, population kinetics. So you can use the first order kinetic uh, equation C2 equals C1 times E to the negative K times delta T. So delta T is the time between uh, uh, the time of C1 and time of C2. Now, when you do get a single level, you only have C2. So you don't really have C1. So because you only have C2, you cannot really calculate the K. So although you have a level from the patient, uh, this method is not truly individualized because the only way to truly individualize uh, the pharmacokinetics is to have two levels to actually calculate the K. Now in this case where you only have a single trough, now you have to estimate what that peak would be. So you can use this equation. So depending on the dose that the patient received, use the volume of distribution from population kinetics and then the trough is the level that you actually measure in the patient. So use the dose that they got and the volume of distribution from uh, population kinetics and the trough that you get to estimate the peak. And then based on this estimated peak, you can re-estimate the K. So previously you used the K from population kinetics. Now you kind of, um, you know, semi-individualize it because the trough is from the patient, but the peak is still estimated. So overall, this K is not truly individualized. And then you can recalculate the clearance based on the new K and the volume of distribution from population kinetics from before. And then once you get these uh, new values, you can calculate new tau and dose using the old volume of distribution and the new K and the new clear clearance. Anytime you make a change to the dose, you got to get a trough at the steady state. So anytime you change the dose, you got to wait to get the level prior to the fourth or the fifth of the new dose. Because every time you change the dose, now the new regimen is not as steady state. So you got to give the new regimen time to get to a steady state. And of course, 
always before you actually adjust the dose and frequency of vancomycin, actually evaluate to see if the patient still needs vancomycin. Oftentimes, vancomycin is used empirically, and after a few days, it should be determined if the vancomycin needs to be continued or not. So oftentimes, if you actually evaluate the need for vancomycin, it might be that vancomycin is no longer needed, so your intervention would be to actually discontinue vancomycin. So before you spend time to figure out the dose and frequency for vancomycin, first evaluate if it's actually needed. Now let's take a look at patient-specific pharmacokinetics. This is when we actually get two levels in the patient in order to precisely calculate the slope of the line, which is the negative k, so the k constant. Now, for this, we need two levels. So the first level is C1, and we have to make sure that the C1 is drawn at least two hours after the end of the infusion. So this ensures that the level is out, outside of the distribution phase so that we get the slope of the correct line. Then we use the equation from first order kinetics to calculate K, and the delta t is the time it takes from c1 to c2 so t2 minus t1 will give you delta t and then using this individualized k we can actually calculate the true peak because whatever c1 we get that's not the true peak the true peak would be impossible to draw because if we actually draw a level at the end of infusion it would be inside the distribution phase so we have to calculate the true peak and we can uh, basically use uh, the uh, first order uh, kinetic equations uh, we can also use this equation which is actually a rearrangement of the same equation you just have to make sure that you use the correct t so the t, the t is basically the time it takes from true peak to trough so um, you know one way to calculate this t for true peak is to subtract uh, infusion time from tau you can also calculate the true trough Assuming that C2 was not a true trough, if C2 was indeed uh, the true trough, then there's, there is no need to calculate it. And then we did all of this because now we can actually calculate the specific uh, patient uh, volume of distribution. So for this, we put the dose that the patient had received before drawing these levels, the time of infusion from that dose, and then 1 minus e to the negative k. So this is the k that we just calculated. Uh, TI again is the time of infusion from the dose that the patient had received and then we divide that by K times the true peak that we just calculated and the true trough that we just calculated times E to the negative K uh, to, uh, times T to uh, time of infusion. So again this is the time of infusion co corresponding to the dose that the patient received before drawing these two levels. And then after we get this volume of distribution and the K, we also need to calculate a new tau. Now this is assuming that the previous dose uh, was not uh, gi giving us the levels that were at goal. And then you can uh, recalculate the tau using the new K that we calculated. And then we calculate a new dose uh, using the tau and the, everything that we so far calculated. So the new K, the new volume of distribution. And then for the peak here, we put the target uh, peak from this table and then uh, negative k and tau so tau will be the tau that we calculated here and then 1 minus e to the negative k uh, times ti uh, for here for ti we can just plug in 1 since we don't know what the dose is yet and then once we get a dose and a tau it's important to make sure that it's going to give us the correct predicted peak and trough before we actually recommend the dose so we will use these uh, equations um, now, uh, this TI should be a TI that matches the dose. So, for example, if you have, uh, uh, you know, 1500 milligram, you should put the TI of 1.5. Because remember, for vancomycin, we have to choose a infusion time that would avoid or at, at least reduce the risk of Redman syndrome. So, if you have a dose of 2000 milligram, then your time of infusion uh, should be two hours. So you make sure that you use the appropriate TI and then 1 minus e to the negative k. Again, this is the k that we calculated and this is the same TI that you put here. Divided by volume of distribution that was just calculated, uh, the k that was calculated uh, times 1 minus e to the negative k times tau. So this is the tau that was calculated here. And then once you get the predicted peak, you use this equation to see what the predicted trough would be. 
and um, again you use the tau minus uh, ti again ti has to match your dose so whatever dose you calculated here the ti has to match it and then if you're happy with the predicted peak and trough then you go ahead and recommend your dose and uh, frequency and you have to make sure that you specify the correct time of infusion as well as um, you know when to give the next dose so for example if depending on why you're adjusting the dose if the level was super uh, super therapeutic then you have to calculate how long it would take for the trough to go to less than 20 and then recommend the new dose to be started at that time